All right, guys, welcome back to another itch.io free-to-play walkthrough. Today we have Soul Alone, the entree, which uh, the creator of Paranormal Games gave me a key to this, and I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> I don't know what kind of game it is because I didn't get look at the description. It looks scary. It's about to begin again. Shh. I know. Well, how far do you think? Not very. Now keep quiet, would you? We're about to begin. Tumble out. Looking for something? Yes, maybe. Okay, and then I can scroll, right? Everything is black, but it feels thick, almost blankety. Complete darkness totally surrounds you. All, the, all you can feel is a hard floor beneath your feet. It's smooth and polished. You're sure of that. The darkness can be felt against your skin like it has a soli so solidity to it in some way. It's, I can't read. There are no sounds or smells, but you feel if there were, they would have to work slightly harder to move through this velvet veil of blackness. You hear a lady with a soft, silky voice, and the game. Oh, what happened there? Looking for something, dar Looking for something, darling? Uh, stay silent and feel your way around. Let's stay silent. Sneaky boy. Also, it's something where you can have different things. Careful now, darling. Wandering around in the dark ain't the smartest of options. You move cautiously, with arms outstretched, slowly waving back and forth, sliding one foot outwards, then the other. Fear fills your chest with every slight bit of progress. Oh, Peggy, stop meddling! You hear dis- Stint, clunking in the darkness. Clunk, clunk, clunk. You know this sound. Clunk. A brief pause. Clunk. Exclamation point. As a the entire room lights and it hurts your eyes, filled with dark ominous reds, rich golds and oaked wood lining. An entire theater begins to light before you, cascading its tones across you. The realization you're standing on stage startles you frozen for a moment, but there's something odd. It doesn't feel like you're actually standing in there, but more like that you are peering into there in that particular spot at that particular moment. Are you seeing things? Close and rub your eyes. Let's do that real quick. I'm gonna stick with the second option. Something's not right. Something's going on. This must be a damn dream. You think as you stand there, pushing your fingers into your eyes, almost trying to st touch your own brain and poke it back to reality. Your chest tightens. Okay, I'm going to open them now. If I'm still in that damn theater, I'm going to, well, I don't know yet. Open them. Oh, shit, she scared me. What's up, lady? Sorry about Peggy, friend. She gets carried away when we have guests, always playing with the damn lights. I'll put her outside now so you won't get any more of that. Where the fuck did the theater go? Well, you went and rubbed yourself out of it, friend. It, it happens every so often. Then I have to deal with you or one of the others. At first, long ago, it used to piss me off thinking I hadn't done a good enough job, but the baker reassured me it was just the way things were. That sometimes were completely out of, things were completely out of my control. Fair enough, I figured. You notice as you talk to this man whose voice is harsh and coarse, deep and loud as like he's always yelling. Oh, I should be yelling then. But the bakery sure <laughs> I don't know. I, can't, I don't have a drill sergeant voice. Shit. Who thinks his voice is a tool to demand respect, but physically seems to show no signs whatsoever of staunchness. Just a meager man on a power trip. That you're still very much in the darkness. It seems as though you're communicating to him through some sort of glass film or a big television. His face is huge, but you feel the, 
as though you are actually the one who is small and he is the size he should be. Almost like being an, an oh wow this noise, in an empty fishbowl and he is peering at you through the glass. I'm looking at you through the glass. What's that song, Stone Sour? I like that song. But you can hear him perfectly fine as the sound enters in from the top of the bowl opening. You get this odd feeling like he is somewhere else but can view you at all times. Like if you're some sort of specimen or something on his lab table or a doll in a dollhouse. What is your name, friend? Name? Name? Ah, name you are. It's Joe, friend. You you can call me Joe if you like. You've already picked my name. Just on a different fucking line of choices. So let's go with Joe. <laughs> Joe, he seems to ponder on it. Like he knows something you don't. But at this point, that's not very surprising. Just Joe, he adds. Like a man who has finally just picked his name. Just Joe, hey? Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. You think to yourself as you <laughs> realize this is a pointless endeavor. Okay, well, who's this baker then? The baker? The baker? The baker? Hmm, the baker. Almost as though he's trying to remember or trying to figure out what he can or can't say. All right, friends, since you're playing, since you are rubbed yourself to here, I'll tell you three things about the baker. One. The baker is a crumb collector. Two, the baker was the first one here before any of us. Three, what you are thinking and feeling right now, friend, it is becoming its own crumb. Ha ha ha, what you fucking experience. Oh wait, what you experience is his for the taking. Ha ha ha, he laughs so loud. It almost bursts your eardrums. You feel his laughter thundering through your chest. Like standing too close to a speaker at a nightclub. Ha ha ha! He begins to cough his laughing cough. Like the movement has upset his lungs. Ha ha ha! Fuck! God. Shit! God. Son of a bitch! He pauses for a moment, looking down at you. I'm so bad at coughing. Looking down at you, catching his last breath, regaining his composure. You can see his eyes are watery behind his cheap reading glasses. Like those cheap ones you buy in chemist on a spinning rack. You think to yourself, the coffee must have made him, them watery, and you can see his cheeks have become flushed with red blotches and pink blotches all smudged together. This world is pretty fascinating. His face seems puffier in a way. God, he looks like one of those serial killers, or they have a sex dungeon with kidnapped girls living in there for years, having babies by breeding by him, breeding his own playmates, who live on a normal street. This is an elaborate story. Normal street with a... Normal cover-up life, and people at work call him by a first name. Joe? Bye, Joe. See you, Joe. Hi, Joe. Coming to the Christmas party, Joe? Have a great weekend, Joe. Then he drives home, pull up on his suburban house, and sees Peggy waiting in the lounge room. Peggy, I forgot about her. You think to yourself, as a bit of fear shoots up through you, who is Peggy? Hmm. Peggy, Peggy. Beautiful, gorgeous, stunning Peggy. I've ripped out so much of myself to be cured of her. I'm bankrupt now. They took her, you know. Those vicious, fucking vicious animals took her away from me. I helped them build their fucked up lighthouses, but I never thought they would have the nerve to steal from me. They buried me in their soul, sound of their lies, then snatched her from me, di dissected her, collected and sampled her. Sampled hid her in a hobble from me. They fucking hid her. I'm threaded through with pain. Their fingerprints are in the construct. Peggy, they took her through the door upstairs. I'm not in the mood for your shit anymore, so fuck off. Leave me be. Oh, wait. Was that? Oh, that was probably the fucking country dude's voice. Oh, well. Leave him. You leave him to himself, and you move out of the room, eventually searching his... House, you find the front door and all exits locked. You walk up some winding stairs past an old grandfather clock. You peer into it, but there is nothing. You move past it. A hall room of some sort presents itself. It's empty, empty, nothing. You think to yourself and as you peer around, deciding there's no point heading back downstairs. And at least 
Whoever was up here isn't anymore, but where have they gone? Could there be a door on the far side of the room? Head to the far side. Oh, this is getting loud and fast. You begin to walk across the dark, polished floor. Your steps echo, but only slightly. There, the room feels warm and still, very still, like movements need permission to enter here. Like movement is only allowed as a guest on special occasions to spend one night here, then it must leave. As you walk through the door, you notice in the left far corner there is an actual door. Curse this that old sad place, you think. As you grab the door's handle, eager to leave the stale, stagnant ballroom behind you, this place is kind of place even a ticking clock would quickly die in. Open the door. You open the door and step through. There's another door, way just a few feet ahead of you. It's dark and it's hard to see what is in there. However, it definitely is as dark. The darkness you experienced earlier isn't this, even the same kind of darkness. You're certain of that. No, this is natural darkness, natural sh shadow, not like that other stuff. Walk into the dark. You step into the room. Your eyes quickly adjust. A small room with a telephone and a chair. There is no room for anything else. To your immediate right, there's a closet door. You move over to it and grab the handle. It's locked twice, tight. It doesn't even jiggle. Bling, bling, bling. <laughs> You pick up the phone. There's silence for a few seconds, then a voice on the other side. You shouldn't be out here. The disembodied voice is a man, deep and clean, modulated and very calming. Do you hear me? There seems to be no anger in it. Oh, there's no anger. Damn it. More worry. You think like something is out of place or mishappen. Say it's silent. You have two choices. You can stay, but something is coming for you. Or you can open that closet door. I wish you all the best. The voice waits for a few moments and hangs up. Wait and see what comes for you. Oh, hail. You don't have to wait long as a masked person enters the room. You try to anticipate the next move, but it's already too late. Gas! Fucking gas! Is the last sigh <laughs> as you hit the floor. Everything goes black. Wake up. Wake up! Go on and put a little makeup. You awaken drowsy and begin to stir. A bright light blinds you. You cannot move. There is nothing, no pain, no motor skills functioning. You see a shadow come over you and you plummet back into the darkness. Wake up! You awaken the dark in the dark on a cold, heart, a hard, cold surface. Your body is riddled with pain. Your thoughts are clouded. Suddenly a light turns on. The pain of it smashes into your brain. You peer around as your eyes adjust. They are cloudy, and everything is a white milkiness. You notice one glass mirror just above you. Raise yourself and look at your own reflection. Oh, look at me. I ain't got no mouth. Shock! You moan in pure panic. Drogue breaks everything within your mind. You tap on the mirror. The reflection replicates, confirming it is you. The monstrosity, the miscreation that is you. You succumb to lunacy. The last parts of you, the absurdity has left you so alone. The end. Let's play it again. That's cool. This is a really neat game. Alright, we read this. Tumble out. Looking for something, darling? Wait, where am I? Oh, darling, you're back where you, you've been but, but, before, but never happened to stay long. You always seem to have a, your mind made up on, and bags packed. Come to think of it, her voice does have a familiar feeling. In a way, could this be a dream? Is this a dream? The light begins to glow in a few feet in front of you. The three cats sit upon rocking chairs. Female voice begins. Well, of course, darling. It's where everything comes in a fully unco unco unconnected circle. Where three is one. Do you ever listen to a song for that one part? This is that part. Where it all unfolds folds in on itself. What? You think to yourself. Oh, darl. You should rub your eyes now. Alright. Ooh. Everything comes into focus. Almost pushing the darkness away. It's her, the voice. She slumped into the chair looking at you. Almost as though she's watching you without any interest. Like she's been 
She's seen a familiar face she knows all too well, almost completely knowing it, knowing you. Amiel, Amelini, and what a word, Emilianas, the name, darling, nice to meet you. She smirks coolishly, as if something, knowing something you do not. Don't you want to know my name? Oh, sweet pea, there's no need to know names here. Names never end. Well, darling, believe me. Well, I'm... You're you, darling. We all know who you are, she interrupts. We, you think to yourself, they all know me, but how? You think to yourself as you come to the conclusion that there's no point going on then if they all seem to know you. Or maybe there's really no name, need for names here, wherever here is. Emiliano's hair is dark, thick and silky. It oddly looks younger than her. You imagine it would smell like, like it's just been washed and dried. Her clothes all fit loosely on her, and, and although she is slim, she is not very skinny. Just perfect, you think to yourself. Just perfect. You repeat again in your mind. Almost as though you have just finished a painting or building a shelf you always needed or spring cleaned. Rearrange your room. That feeling of accomplishment met with a nice self pat on the back, but you had no hand in her creation. Well, at least as far as you know. Perhaps it's just more of an admiration thing than anything else. Like bearing witness to something and completely understanding the reason and method of it. And it fills you with a mind, like-minded accomplishment. As a fellow creationist within the same realm of whatever or whoever created the thing or situation in this case. Like two separate gods admiring each other's work. Or even a new god coming across an old god's work and comprehending what the old god's intentions was when creating this such and such. Look closer. You look deeper at her face. Deeper into her. There is something there under the surface. Something you know rather well. She, she's wearing a face. She's hiding it. I know because I've done it so often. Stand in line. Speaking to an acquaintance. Answering the are you okay question. The one that is asked but most of the time out of politeness with no real interest or weight to it. No different to a bless you. After a sneeze, almost as reactionary and knee-jerk as a habit. Knee-jerk habit. The only difference is, bless you, doesn't come with the fear of where... Oh. Doesn't come with the fear of where the present moment goes next. What will come out of this are you okay question? What problem will be brought to light? that you will now have to help with, deal with. What of off course issue could arise that may pull you away from your flight plan of getting through the day? What effort? There are those that genuinely care though, and most of us have at least one of them in our lives, so that's gotta count. But there's something wrong here, and this place seems like it needs more due care. She seems like she could possibly be at lo as lost as me, and I'd rather be lost with someone than alone, and lost at least for the moment anyways. Alone and lost feels like more madness than is necessary. What is wrong, Am Ameliana? Oh, what the fuck was that? That was scary as hell. That scared the shit out of me. Well, darling, since you asked, I've been having terrible dreams of late. I find myself in a state of perpetuated sadness. On one hand, I do know there is a luxury in thinking and contemplating, but on the other hand, it never stops. I don't want it on my mind all the time. Do you know what it's like being the crumb that exists? She pauses for a moment, looking at you up and down and slowly, then she seems to look beyond you, past you, outward towards the blackness behind you. No, I'm sure you wouldn't. Actually, darling, maybe you would, but definitely not the reader. The readers are something more than us. I'm stretched and strained. Oh, darling, all I get are headaches. Headaches accompanied by anger and pain and time is the tragedy. Is it just a question of faith? Is there just a baker who decided to have the crumbs 
the, this crumb me here and decided to have me here crumbling captured in these questions am I the baker am I the baker what a counterfactual idea of metaphysical nonsense a girl with a mind questioned the tensions of herself a mind questioning its own mind oh darling a chance chain of drunk co coincidence maybe questioning everything she wipes her face with her hands and then stretches her fingers through her hair it seemeth smoothly, smoothly glides between her white knuckles. Her head t tilts back, exposing the defined ridges, curves and lines of her face. Their smoothness become uncherished highways. You feel a sudden head rush, a lonely head rush, like passing a sign on a dark highway road. Having it become illuminated suddenly and then passed over, back into the darkness again just as abruptly however in your vision you are not the driver for some reason she is but she is ghostly transparent almost as you can also see everything from the point of view or just above her maybe to the upper right of her head as the sign emerges from the dark a figure stands beside it you are one the one out there on the side of the road standing next to the passing by sign staring into the vehicle as it speeds past you see yourself come into the headlight, then the red glow of taillights tail bathe you as you are swallowed again. You continue to stare through the rear vision mirror as you return to where you are currently. Am I? Is she? Are we? Protruded pale knuckles gliding through silky black hair. Or is there a piece of us lost in here somewhere? You consider. Tell me, Dad. What does it even mean to exist? Especially in here where nothing really happens ever. Is this a woman's voice? For example, if you were to think of the word color without mercy or malice, you would get an explanation involving light. Light, darling, light. But of exists, you can only get ever get other words describing the same thing. Damned mirrors upon mirrors. The whole fucking place seems like it's stuck in a dark corner of a mirror, a dead spot in the reflection, but whose reflection am I stuck in, you think to yourself? Is it different for peop different people asking the same question? What if the readers, the ones who truly just visit and know the score, who after this just leaves such freedom, could, could it just be what is it is and nothing more, clear so clear? Just all in our minds, just whatever is real? Maybe the readers have some the same questions as us that aren't so different. Perhaps that's why they come. Meliana shifts in her chair and looks around as though checking whether or not there's anyone else around. She leans in towards you and her voice lowers to a more serious tone. Darling, how do we even tell what does exist and what does not? How do we protect ourselves from it and find the answers that are lost? Does existence require something to affect something else? If it doesn't affect anything, does it not exist? Darling, would it require the need to create changes on something, no matter how slight or soft, or at least resists itself being changed by something else? She's staring past you again, not through you, but just behind you. So it's just being able to prevent change that otherwise would have taken effect or create it that would have otherwise not happened like this? What? See? Like the blind. Well, it seems like I may be onto something here, darling. So, something exists only when it is having an effect something else. The effect upon effect upon effect. She smirks with a look of accomplishment and lounges back in her chair, sedated almost with achievement. No matter how many school the effect is, it still shows it to exist, even where intentionally creating all the options to lead to the same outcome. A compendium of effects merely affecting other effects, which then affect upon effect. So darling, if I've then affected you just now, does that mean I exist just as much as you? Even for a split moment, is that the true function of or extent of my purpose I guess darling it just may be for now that I'll have to do maybe darling the real question is how do I live how do we live you me the reader all of us 
It's just all could be a big coincidence and the only difference is the dark degree of suffering. The greater the suffering, the same, smaller the coincidence, a slip slide of fate. I lo like an idea, like an atom bomb, like fiction pushing itself into a mind, gripping a slither of existence, trying to prove to itself that it has a purpose and meaning. Darling, it all feels like it's like it's falling away. She smiles and directly looks at you. Do you think you're like me, wanting someone to be afraid of losing you, always finishing, always finding yourself terrified? of losing the ones close to you, doubting anyone would ever fight to keep you around? I'm not sure. Run. 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 Run was the last thing you heard her scream in your face. Run! Before you could comprehend the situation, you were already running, running aimlessly into the darkness. As you ran, you were unsure you heard her screaming. It came almost from nowhere. She just flipped out, already being on edge, and shot you into an instant flight. Am I run just running in circles or a straight line? What if my balance or sense of direction is slightly off and I'm doing a big circle? You stop, you stand still, hands on knees, panting, looking around in the darkness. Your saliva is wet and cold. You swallow some of it and it just feels refreshing. Existence, you relax, abandoning the stiffness. Am I like her? In this place, I feel like I'm spot fading, not falling out of existence. I don't understand this place. The dark, a baker, crumbs, and readers who are losing her fucking shit on me. Was she saving me or just fucking scaring the shit out of me for shit and giggles? Fucking crazy ass bitch. You stand chest out, taking deep breaths, trying to get the heart rate relaxing. But I do know there's no turning back. Shit, she scared the bejesus out of me. Move on into the darkness. You walk on for some time, mainly just listening and waving your arms before you... Were there other options? I don't think so. Before you, in order not to walk face first into anything. But you notice, this is starting to gain longer breaks between each arm wave. Like your brain is getting used to the fact that there is nothing in front of you. Every now and then, a bit of fear pops back into your mind. There, that there is, could be a wall or sudden drop in front of you, so you slow. Caution slows your movement, then relaxes again after some time. This is exhausting, you think to yourself. The light pulses dimly just ahead, like being lost at sea, and finally noticing the light emerging from a lighthouse after being misplaced at sea for days. The light offers hope, lands, salvation. You move towards it. But slowly and cautiously with the serene calm, it could be exhaustion or it could be precaution, it's too hard to tell. But one thing you already know is this place. Sometimes the land can be more treacherous than the sea of blackness. Hey reader, yeah you, pick this option. Alright, well, I was gonna pick this one, but... Everything freezes, your character in the darkness, even though it's dark. You can feel it all become still. So still, in fact, that you seem to be here, but also out there. Or in there, or more just where you happen to be at this very moment. Text sounds and noises are all that follows. The sound carries... The sounds carry themselves on pre-recorded echoing of what was something before, but drifting on, letting go, ejecting you, making you once again aware of yourself and your surroundings. What self do I speak of? This voice inside of you, of course. Surroundings? Well, where you are at this very moment. Quick, do me a favor. Look up and around. Oh, I wish I could see what you are seeing at this very moment. How cool it would be to have that ability, don't you think? But let's get back to that inner voice, you know. This one reading, can you hear it? Have you ever studied it? Really, I mean, really listen to your own voice a lot. The truest narration of all those happenings a fiction, but somehow a solid world within your mind, following letters to words and to voice. Your voice and my words, it's in here where you are truly so alone that I now address. 
And it's more important that you begin to listen to it more often, especially when it begins to wander off by itself. That's where the magic is, you know. Funny, I was so alone when I wrote this, and I happened to just be listening as it began to wander. So I recorded what it said. But that was before. Who knows how long? But now you have a, a past me with a present you. Don't worry, I'm merely a specter now. Words from a phantom. I wonder what I'm doing right now, the present me, if I'm still around even. Don't you wish you could tap in through the semi-connection we are having and be able to see what I'm doing? That would be really fucking cool, actually. Would that be- That is actually- <laughs> That would be fucking action. Well, unless you're jerking or something, I don't want to see that. Oh well, on we go. Hmm, let's introduce a, a voice, a character, another piece of the story, another fragment to unfold. Forget we know you, we're over here, and let's continue. One, two, three, hi. A whispered voice comes from the jet black surrounding. You feel uncomfortable, like something slipped. It could have been the startle. Thinking as you stand, reflexes at the ready, looking every which way. One, only that one light in the distant glows and hums, waiting and daring not to move a muscle. Other than your head darting around with the upper torso falling fluidly, like a co dancing cobra emerging from a clay pot, defensively trying to cover all angles of potential attack, the light darts across and against the direction of your vision, and peripheral, as if it is a firefly mixed with the straightened speed of a shooting star, it disappears as you look behind you, leaving streaked patterns to your vision, peering into a black wall at face-to-face -face distance. Don't worry, I'm not here to harm you. I have no intention of that, nor do I trust you. The voice whispers. The voice sounds male, but weak and plight. I noticed you, and by the look of things, you're new here. Hard to pin down or locate at all. You stand at the ready. For some reason, you find yourself looking downwards and a few feet ahead at waist height, as if the voice is coming from someone at a child's taunt. What do you want, then? You whisper back, having no reason to be whispering, but you do anyways. If I could just focus, just notice some movement or a silhouette, I could size this thing up. And if it's a small like I'm thinking, I'm gonna grab this little fucker. I'm gonna grab the shit out of this little fucker. <laughs> thinking and shake the shit out of him. Thinking while peering as hard as possible, studying every patch of black your eyes look onto. The corner of your vision can see, still see the twinkle of dark light in the distance. I won't be staying long. Have to keep moving around here. Remember that, Wanderer. See, I know you're, you were new, and you seem decent. It's a risk, but folks need help too, so that's the risk I'm willing to take. If I feel safe, that is. Where the actual fuck is this place, dog? The voice feels less threatening after listening, and you forget about trying to attack it. Still, guarded through your through, you wait for a response and quickly dart a look over to the light. There's some places out of here, in the other places, even familiar places, a room in your home, even your own bedroom, wherever you just are nested, with intimate and recognizable objects that you have decorated, some with meaning, some for appeal, but nevertheless a safe environment, protective sheltering you from the rest of the world. Separating your God forbid, even your own prison if the circumstances fall in that direction, but solitary and confined behind those closed doors. Yeah, I wish for the life of me I could remember that for myself. Lights on, there are still small areas within that very room that are very, pretty much all the time absent of light. Nooks, crannies, corners, underneath and behind. They hold dusty realm of the forgotten things and undefinables. Lights off as a familiar subject ever slightly reform and twist just enough that they seem to become a little less known to you. A coat rack becomes a gaunt figure. A stretched shadow seems to be reaching forward. A picture on the wall holds faces of loved ones, but they seem somehow disfigured or could join. A pile of clothes become a small man sitting on a chair. This is when those small, ever dark, Areas breach and reach out. Boundaries begin to fade, spreading outwardly, covering, invading the what was once familiar. 
that ever darkness. In its black, blackest center is where soul sits. Stare long enough with patience and curiosity as sleep begins to overpower you. You will see what I say is true. As the door lunges, hinges loosen and the locks undo, soul opens up. So I'm in. Voice cuts you off. I have helped with what I know. There's nothing more. You understand a little farther now. I've played my part. We may bump into each other again. Plus, I think you have a light you were planning on heading to. Sometimes you need to unfold all options to find more answers. Best of luck to you. Wait! Nothing as you stand there. Somehow, feeling the presence of the voice has already moved on. Just as quickly as it came, despondent with no way to give chase. You turn your attention to the pulsing light and begin to meander towards it, onwards. Oh, that's one necky man. Wait, oh, I'm an amputee. What the hell? As you move closer, you realize the light wasn't pulsing at all, but swinging back and forth. Slowly coming to a standstill, it now just sits above a man with no arms, sitting on an old cane and wood chair. He is staring right into your direction, but it seems as though there's been no notice of you yet. You're still in the darkness, just out of the boundary of view. I know you're out there, he yells. Walk into the light. You step into the light. Feel surprisingly warm. For some reason, you've smelled menthol and mint. The man is breathing steadily. He still hasn't made eye contact with you yet. His head is slightly tilted, as if he is listening intently. You shuffle one of your feet to make a sound. He turns his head toward you. You realize he's... Yes, I am blind, he states, beating you to the thought as it, if he knew the shuffle of a foot was a test by the stranger before him. And armless, in case you didn't notice. A foxy smirk slips across his face as his head just juts upwards. He has a gentlemanly voice, young but stern. He seems in good in a good mood, and you feel relaxed around him for some unknown reason. There are no walls around you, but the paneling of darkness has this way of making you feel as though when stepping into the light, it's like stepping into another room with divisions and inside and outside. The works, all the rules of physics as a room comes with. Odd, you think to yourself. As you quickly glance the surroundings, there's the cane chair he is sitting on, and the floor is polished dark red wood with heavy grains across it. The deep yellow light bouncing off of the floor gives atmosphere of a thick red wine. Looks look to it all. The tans it tans the man. Tans the man. He seems calm and cool, almost like a skin toned brush stroke the center of a canvas completely monotone with his warm red his pants and the chair are almost the same shade as the floor he almost looks like a torso with a head floating in space his pants are dark khaki and he is wearing blackish red boots he's tall and gaunt if he stood up he would lurch over me probably walking the darkness i see what brings you to me i see what an odd thing to say the darkness, yes. Where is this place? Well, it's not dark in here, is it? For me, it's dark everywhere, but at, at different depths of gloom. It's a nothingness with a lot. It's a nothingness with a lot of something. Some ones and some wires. I didn't invite you. You must be a drifter or lost or both. You better keep lost, drifter, for everyone's sake. Never stop, never become still. Being still isn't your part to play in here. It's not the way things work, but then again, rules are meant to be played by till you question their existence. All I can say is don't leave your world here. There's no need to crash and burn. A part to play, crash and burn? Yes, it's the reality of things, I suppose. Reality of things, what reality is this? He pauses for a long while. He then smiles, but not with his foxy wry smile. It holds a more understanding expression. An expression knowing that the answers are needed. Perhaps realities is a better way to phrase things. Sometimes one reality 
fades and another reality may blend through, filling the first reality's pores, but other times they don't. Other times they exist with each other, held together by the need to co just exist, rubbing shoulders, hugging one another, or at the worst of circumstances, battling one another where only one can ever be triumphant. It is at these times fighting for survival turns ugly, where one must eat the other who succumbs. I've seen this ugliness. I've been this ugliness. The ugliness is not just a state of mind. It is a necessity here on mechanical of the workings, a rule of survival. Love-hate relationships, but relationships nonetheless. All destined to set each other on fire at some point, lusting for each other like colliding galaxies. Then another may be born, making it three from soul to the crumbs and then to over there. Sometimes, though, it's just a vacant lot awaiting construction to begin. A joke said in a room of unhappy individuals left to linger in a dry in the center of the room, then to go on its own way, where it pleases because it realizes within its own existence that it is not wake welcome there. Some sell themselves to the highest bidder, some, well, they, they just fade away, move on, burn themselves out. Perhaps they are the smartest ones. You notice the stature change and an air of seriousness fills the room. Even the light in the room seems to be slightly warm and dark and adding a dense gloom as he leans back against his chair. Long, tall, chest and ribs exposed, lay bare. Human existence is lonely, he sighs and blindly stares at you. It's tasteless and dull, full of negativity, subordinates sitting below that big fiery ball. Who gets to decide things? Anything? All things? And when decisions are made, excuse me, who gets to enforce it? Should it entail surrendering all freedom? Is that the answer? Place ourselves in the decider's hands, the reader's poor, or in the baker's hands, and hope the decider or the baker knows what's best for us. Oh, the creator's the baker, duh. Why well, trust either of them? Ha! Huh. It's blind faith in a whole truth. He shifts slightly and you feel I'm the reader, the creator's the baker, I'm pretty sure. He shifts slightly and you feel yourself do the same. Like someone yawning across the room and you can turn suddenly, need to stretch your mouth. Maybe, thanks to the duality, one did not actually come before the other, and one is, that is therefore not stronger than the other. So maybe, just maybe, the decided possi possibly even existed before the decision was even grappled with. To begin with, it duality is the case, and there is always going to end up polarized in one extreme or the other. The cynics will lean towards the negative, the optimists leaning towards the positive. Ha! Really, neither one of them is more correct than the other. In fact, they are both equally incorrect. All they are do really doing is playing favoritism games. If one recognizes the whole for what it is, then it's plain to see that getting caught up in either pole's position is really not the place to be. He leans in, and although you know he is blind, you feel an odd sensation that he's staring at you. Not just as you, at you, but into you. You suddenly feel less comfortable, violated in some slight way, naked almost. So what of non-duality then? Well, it's foreign and not welcome as a concept So, to either of the extremists. Why? Because letting go of their attachments would mean a loss of identities. Yes. Their precious fucking conceited identities. So why even stop and ponder then? Why contemplate issues that never were a bother to you? Why build castles in the air? Because this needs to be addressed in order to understand the order of the here. The purpose, the answer, the darkness you find yourself in all, and all that it holds in here. This place we were named Soul. All the baker is built and outside where the crumbs dwell and lay crumbs. From those fucking Lumina to Wrigley, the Origin place or over there. So many characters in place, so many answers are fine. But I tell you this, Drifter, here soul, where this darkness sits. It is really the connector, the key to all of them, the glue. Would you like to hear what the answer is? Yes. 
The answer is nothing anyway. Fucking nothing. <laughs> There's nothing existing in the first place. Do you see it yet? How negative. How pessimistic you think. Well, that couldn't be any farther to, from the truth. See, pessimism and optimism, as we both just elaborated before attached labels of value, whereas nothing sees that there are no values attached until one chooses to assign the label. It's detached, truly detached, and within the art of detachment, there is no more code, but more of a rule of thumb, not to engage in any word or deed that would either enable attachment or hinder detachment both in oneself and in others not because it's good bad right or wrongful moral or immoral but because it is contrary to the essence of nothing in the first place <laughs> as fox smile emerges faintly on the edges of his lips this darkness that engulfs us refrains from assigning distinctions because it enables attachment, but the attachment comes from you and by your own choice. It does not hold anything within itself. In here, regarding the darkness, you cannot assign a value to a no value, but when you do, that in itself becomes a value. However, a value we have chosen to assign from our own point of view. It has no embodiment in the darkness itself. The darkness holds on to nothing. He relaxes back into his chair again, and then he gazes, his gaze moves into the dark, black backdrop, filling his lungs with a deep breath. Of course, there are the ones who warp the darkness nature into a perversion of their own benefits they give the false value that no value allows them to do whatever they wish whatever they desire at all but that is one big fucking contrary to what this all is and if you wander around here long enough you will find them the ones who enjoy the darkness and misuse it for their own purposes hope you never come across them you can't help but feel as long as as though you notice a sense of duplicity in the last sentence. This place is not attached to anything. It is not good. It is not bad. It is not right. It is not wrong. It is not correct. And it is not incorrect. There is no position to take in here. For there is no position. It is not a value to uphold. For there is no value. It is not a reason to have. For there is no reason. It is not meaning to place for there is no meaning it is not a purpose to find for there is no purpose he pauses and a smile fills out his cheeks the fox smile has become something devilish and it is not a narrative and to follow and unravel through choices of pathways therefore there is no narrative the softer fox smile returns and the fiendish look dissipates it is not non-existence because non-existence is a concept of some state that only holds significance with conjecture to exist in. Meaning that non-existence is just another aspect that exists. No, this is nothing. This darkness, what it is, can never be found so long as you are seeking and believing there is something to find. There is nothing. There is nothing to be found. Nothing and no thing. But it is not a suffering zone, bliss, perfection, utopia, mist, fo a smoke, fog, or even in void or even empty space. It is nothing you can point to or allude to. It is not any sort of quality or state of being. But all that is something, and there are no somethings here that actually are part of the darkness from form. They are merely indwellers, something filling a sort of space. It has no labels because it is beyond labels. This shit doesn't feel like nothing to me. It feels like something. I'm something. I am, I am. Surely, if I am, then this is, or is it not? Is it really just nothing? My brain's going to explode. How absurd, a way of station of nothing. You think to yourself as your head hurts and you are, I knew it, and you are filled with the feeling that there is something not quite real about any of this. You and all of anything that is something here is just a visitor, a tourist, a tenant. You should really try to understand what it is you think you are getting yourself into and to understand this is just to reach and understanding that there really isn't anything to understand. Ha! Huh, but look at you. 
But looking at you, I think you are still not ready for it because you play this game with choices and pathways that have attachments that you can never get rid of. Your ideas, beliefs, concepts, and convictions make you choose your very path to here. Your values, purpose, meanings, outside narrative, your distinctions of good, bad, wrong, right, evil, good, correct, and incorrect make you play a game that isn't worth playing. But you could... S but you still cannot tell because you have played it as long as everyone else. And you have played it so alone with all of us here, in here. And no individual necessarily has a place in it. His body relaxes and his head leans back over the chair. His neck stretches as his Adam Apple punches out from his throat. It moves up and down like a ping pong ball, pushed by air. As he whispers something over and over again, you cannot hear it, but his voice sounds like a wet serpent moving through the reeds in shallow gray water. Move close and listen to his words. Move closer, but it's still a whisper, almost as if he was intentionally lowered his volume. You won't go closer, leave him be. Retreating to the bowels of the dark, you feel it cover you, submerge into the black smudge. And at this moment, you truly do not feel unconnected to everything except the black, a severed roamer, a vagabond, a drifter, an explorer, a floating and displaced self of what I am somewhere else. Wandering the darkness seems to go on. Wondering the darkness seems to go on for a while. The black canvas begins to play tricks on your perception and even laughs right through your thoughts. At almost random moments, sound buzz by, but yet doesn't actually seem to be there. There seems to be something comforting in the negative space though. Something deeply safe, like a child hiding under a blanket from a monster. You notice you are just walking now, and any caution of walking into something has vanished along with the fear of what else could be out there in the dark and wait. One foot in front of the other, stepping forward onwards in what seems to be a straight line. You see, stop scanning your surroundings at this point as any glimmer of light would stand out like the sun after eclipse. Photophobia, symptom of abnormal intolerance to visual perception of light. Question mark exclamation point. Oh wow, your eyes suddenly burst into pain. Like looking into the sun, they begin to force themselves closed. The sound of buzzing of artificial lights turning on all at the same exact time moment echoes through you. I was all alone. I was alone is all you could think. Of as your eyes begin to cease burning and start to adjust opening themselves adjusting quicker than you expected everything in front of you is illuminated the man's voice the man sitting in the chair in front of you lumina burrow and mouth left open gaping looks just like a trash can suddenly it is dark again in the pitch black you could see still see the negative silhouette of the room and the strange man sitting in the middle of the room the brightest lit parts left as green orange to white imprints of what was there all precautions and alertness have spiked through your being you move forward with arms wavering eyes wide open surveying for any glimpse or flicker of light for breath held ears pricked to any sound heart pounding and racing legs feeling shaky but agile you move on but in an entirely different fashion this time ready for what may come Damn it! Damn this place and it's non-rational shit! You think as you move forward, like an exposed lamb who wandered too far from the flock, yeah, and surrounded by wolves in the tucky, fucking dead of night, everything and everyone here are so unknown, so obscure, it's a constant threat, everything is a threat in here, everything. You feel your chest tighten along with your fist, your jaw clenches and panic is quickly turned to anger and frustration. Then to a determination. Your strides forward become more controlled, pushing out all the fear as it becomes replaced with resolve. This fuel won't last forever, but it feels good for a while as you move on. Lights! 
the fuel long gone and completely diffused just as de desperation was beginning to invade. The light shines in the distance. Once again, you feel like a moth to a flame and your body takes you towards it. You stop before a group of interconnected tents. As you take a step closer, you look down and the light spreads and through the tips of the dark green grass, it's so dense that the light seems only to blanket its surface, like light trying to penetrate your hand over it. Warmth. The t its touch is soft and damp. Part of you just wants to lay down on it and rest. Squatting feels good too. Bending the knees and hips makes you realize how long you've been walking for. You look back at the tent and read the sign overhanging the entrance. Electricity of the farm. Lumina Bureau. Electricity surely is connected. Fuck. You ponder as you take a deep breath and begin to stand. Your knees creak and feel rusty as you return yourself to the upright position you've spent so much time in. I'm gonna move towards the entrance. You move cautiously across the silent, spongy grass. Your stomach begins to knot and a tumor of fear bulges its way up your throat like a cancer that will begin to spread itself. Spread if you don't swallow it back down. You swallow as you guardedly grab onto the tense edge of tarp. Pull open the tarp. An empty ticket booth stands this across from you. The light is on, but there's definitely nobody in there. Oh well, at least I didn't have to pay for this shit. To your left, a display room lights up and startles you at first. A speaker blares out on recorded voice of a hunted young lady. Welcome to the electricity of the Farm Bureau, brought to you by Lumina Bureau, illuminating the... aphotic. Photic. Suddenly, another booth lights up to the right. An upbeat melody plays from the piano, but there is no movement. The girl seems like very realistic wax sculptures. Both booths are encased in a glass wall, so there is no chance to get close enough to study them. Survey the surrounding room. Tent is circular, and it feels oddly solid considering its fabric. It may just be because there is no wind moving it. It feels damp and sad for some reason. Thick where it absorbs the artificial light vividly glowing from the booths pushing itself against the tarp then dissipating to black as it peaks as its peak at its peak point above you a booth filled with lights and mirrors stand a few feet away from you across the tent just a few feet more to the back right a small hallway with a light and a door nothing else the sunless world you mutter your breath as you inspect both options the booth you step into the booth and the door closes behind you automatically you turn and push against it trapped fuck you think and then you suddenly t the lights turn off standing in the darkness the booth seems to be a mechanical as it begins to hum the light around the base no more than two rows high just below your knees become dimly lit you can see your reflection, a ghostly reflection that doesn't really feel like you, or at very least a poor copy of you. Then, what? What the hell is going on here? Photos. Photos of past and near present beg and ache to be looked at. A man. Oh. A male voice orates through the speakers, but it is so clear that it fills within you, almost as though it has breached and penetrated your inner monologue, taking up resonant beside your own cautious. The voice is modulated, but pleasantly calming, well-spaced, and paced out perfectly. Its respectability grabs your undivided attention. Only the blind may stare directly into the sun. Who are you? What is... The all of who you are. Who are we? Where is the truth? The illusion and confusion are so seductive in nature. The booth hums quietly and you hear a slight so slide and click as the new image transitions into view. Reality? Truth? Do we dwell within a universe? What is that? Darwinian thought would place you as merely a creature, a product of 
an outcome of millions of years of evolution, a byproduct of happenings, nothing more than a circumstance and a coincidence, a coincidence that obeys no laws, well no laws that we are aware of at least. Or is there more to it? Is there a preordained cos cosmic meaning to it all? A godly baker's hand that placed you into the darkness to begin with? That gave you the push and tumbled you in here intentionally and with some purpose and to f and function to play out a part in the great scheme of things within here. You feel a slight mood of discomfort slowly drift over you. This fucking baker, you, you think to yourself, or is it all just a simulation? A game to be played, a choose your own adventure. Does anything around you even exist? Yes, you can see it. You may touch it and hold it. Pick it up even. But how do you know you're not just sitting behind the screen somewhere playing a game? As if there's a reality somewhere else outside of here. And perhaps there is another screen behind that one also and so on. Forever being deceived, but enough with abstractions. Let's move on, shall we? What is actually here versus a narrative of the mind? I mean, you know you you think, therefore you must exist. Sorry to diverge off track, but let's make sure the reader is still with us after all. Reader, press the button or leave now. We wouldn't want you being somewhere you wish not to be. Reader, what the fuck is this shit? You think as you attempt to turn around and look to the rear of you. But there seems not to be enough room to turn her completely. The light in the booth from the screen and small bulbs seem to not allow you to see much else. However, from what you can see, there seems to be no buttons anywhere. And even filling around produces no button. Great, I'm stuck. Please press the button to continue the presentation. This will allow you to leave the booth. Give me one moment. presentation I guess oh wonderful let's move on shall we well well it's still working you think puzzled as the voice goes on but what is it that you actually think you have what makes you what you are are you a person or is that merely an idea we really only have our own perceptions of what we are experiencing so, you are just perceiving ex the experience of being a person. There are five senses, so if one is lucky enough to have all five. Taste, touch, smell, hearing, sight. These are the confirmed mechanics that contextualize experience. It should be noted that becoming impaired in one or more of these senses does not hinder one to still be able to form a working frame of reference in order to perceive an experience. Just one of the senses will become the dominant one as the situation requires. Again, I digress. Let's move on, shall we? Yeah, sure. Ah, still with us. Terrific. A sense is not just an end result. In fact, it is a field of information that is when translated into a sense via a sense organ. So taste, touch, smell, sound, and sight do not exist merely on their own. Without the sense organ, they are just vibrations of energy, sense data. So move backwards in the process and sense data is just different densities of energetic information. Naked. So where you are currently, which is beyond your screen, the dominant sense at play is the sight. The approximate field of view for an average human eye measured from the fixed point of where you are focusing at, this very moment is typically 30 degrees superior up, limited by the brow, 45 degrees nasal, limited by the nose, 70 degrees inferior down, and 100 degrees temporal 
towards the temples, but I divagate. Divagate? Let's move on, shall we? So look at your screen. Not what is in it, but your screen as an object. Notice how it has borders? It is not all encompassing. This is just like your vision. Now, for all intents and purposes, extensively, excuse me, this is all you have. Let us use this box as a metaphor of the extent of the mechanics of your perception of experience and existence. Anything else you have concluded in the past, outside and beyond your current focused perceptions, border i.e. the screen is it's an abstraction. Are you a human being? Have you ever really had an outside reference point of disembodiment to confirm that you are? And even if so, wasn't this outside model just another image of a screen depicting a persona you have identified as your own self? What of our own bodies then? Look at your hand, goon. Oh, go on, <laughs> goon. Okay, I've looked. Interesting. That's not my hand. Well, there you are, a strong indication of what ourselves are. Confirmation that you are indeed a human. You can see your hand, therefore you are a human being. Looking upon your hand, simple, right? Only that isn't the truth of what is being in indicated here. The identity of a human being is, uh, is assumed. It is an abstraction yet again. A story that is told within the mind that is transfixed with the confines of a screen. It seems to me that you are, may have forgotten the borders and that with the which fall outside of these boundaries. It's fine, don't let it bother you as so much as it is. Very common to get yourself all caught up in the, these appearances. That appear on the screen, you find your true self lost in them. It's a bit like the darkness, really. Don't come to think of it. But alas, this is why we find ourselves here. Now, let us take another closer look at this, at the hand on the screen. The truth is, it's exactly where it appears to be. The visualization of the hand on the screen. Since when did this become an assumption that you are human? Imagine for the moment that you are playing choose your own adventure game, but with the booth in the digital character, even though you have been choosing and controlling pathways of the character, did you ever actually believe you were the character? What in the hell? What is this guy talking about? Me, a digitized character, a figment of imagination, a wooden boy, nothing more than fiction. Where? It's very difficult to determine what the outside of a box looks like when you live inside of it. When you watch a film, are you the main character? You may imagine that you are or establish some kind of relatable identification with these make-believe characters, but the truth is these characters and the words they inhabit are attributed or inferred to be something they are not. Dismantled and boiled down, they are nothing more than patterns on a screen. Well, how about a mirror then? We look into a mirror and see ourselves, don't we? Allow us to look at an example of this. Is this similar to what you are referring to? Actually, all that you see is a character on a screen, looking at a reflection in a mirror. Even when you peer into the mirror, it is just still just a reflection of a character in a mirror on the screen of the visualization. Do you see where we are going with this? Yes, go on. All that you have is a portrayed experience of existence that can be witnessed to imply something about the nature of what is witnessing the experience which is you but referencing the content of the experience is really addressing the wrong area of concern this guy is so big brain this is crazy this is similar to saying that you can understand film projection by following the plot of a movie this is the wrong area of concern because when one looks deeper to into the details of illusion what one finds necessarily draws the attention further away from the origin this is how a delusion works and you can look only look so far into an illusion before it become will become necessary to rely on prosthetic technology 
looking into the microcosm of the microcosm, you will quickly in come in need of a microscope or telescope. The thing is, neither one is a peek into the truth. At best, all you have is a model of an abstraction based on a perception. The details of an illusion is only ever enforced. The idea is that there are deeper levels beyond our capacity to explore. Layers of appearances that go on forever. Well, there really is are layers of appearances that go on forever. When I use the word appearances, I mean that illusions only give off the impression of a deeper significance. But in all, all in all, it is only an appearance on a screen. If you take notice of the face value of an illusion with a, a quick glance, you'll see him be able to identify the facade of the appearances and produce it produces. You manage to become aware of recognizing it. Take this for example. Our angels, our sweet little angels, from time long lost, things. They never truly were, knew where they were going, for the sun was always behind them. But that is another time and another story, and the sun is no longer no bother to us anymore. Question mark. So our girl stood within a field of a place, but it isn't a place, nor is it even a contrived portrayal of a place. To you, it is nothing more than a mere experimental visualization in the framework. And even this framework doesn't depict the setting to appear as a show. As there are no wings, no girls, there is no grass, no field where that they stand in. There isn't any height, width, depth, or distance. What you have here is just an arrangement of pixels. Yes, at times I do feel like as though the illusion of hope, the dream within my loneliness twists and flattens. Like I am being searching, a being searching for a soul, but I am a soul searching for a being. Goodbyes without fingertips. I really am losing my mind in here. All the, it somehow feels like home. Dot, 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 dot. Harry. Understanding this, it can be known that the the world is actually flat, not because the world is indeed flat, not because the earth globe is flat, not the, no, the earth globe is round, and NBSP concept. The earth globe is flat because the earth is an inter, not, inter, I, itamon, the visualization screen. And everything on the visualization screen is flat. Things on the screen only appear to be three dimension due to the eye because of the pixelation pixel configuration. It is not no different than watching a 3D film. It seems to be three dimensions dimensional, but is it three dimensional? So comprehending these holographic illusions in reality can now be better understood. Now, their seemingly three-dimensional embodiments are not that different to the mechanics of a 3D movie. It is a fair point, you think, as you listen on. So I do hope this clears up some confusion. Try to keep this in mind when dealing with anything in perception. You have loved ones? No, you don't have loved ones. You have a perception of the experience of loved ones. You have a dwelling, a home to rest your head. No, you don't have a home to rest your head. You have a perception of an experience of a home to rest your head. Da da da. A self, you don't have even have a self. You have a perception of an experience of a self. And the same goes for anything in or out of this world there is no world there is only a perception of an experience of a world and now we come to the end of the perception a fifth note you seek just wait then or leave but this is the second to last option a footnote wait and see the machine hum slow and light slowly dims out leaving you standing in the pitch black for a few moments which seem to drag out there's nothing viewing screen where the slides were presented lights up and you realize it is 
a room with in there on the other side slightly bigger than your booth the figure taps on the glass at you fear rushes and floods through you you lean back against the exit panel but it does not budge the figure relaxes and sits that's me ain't it and sits just looking at you it breathes slowly and deeply it is hard to look at you and it seems so sad rife with agony your bewilderment keeps you frozen what of memories then the voice is black back and at first if flitches is you but you are still ossified unable to take your eyes off the thing on the other side wake and breathe swallow some of the terror long grass like a forest stepping on ants clouds pressing passing by producing all sorts of imaginings a cold drink freshly laid beds I think that's bad. Cold and clean with the smell of detergents, the scent of rain. Frosty mornings as dew slowly transforms droplets seeping into the cold earth. Steamed exhales, exhales with a numb no nose. The leftover quietness from the le night being broken and if forgotten by an early bird song blessing the new day. You calm to the idea of a new day. Hope. Yes, you kiss, you, yes, a kiss, a hug, your first day, street lights, the crunch of gravel underfoot, the song you know all the words to and the reason behind the song, the first time you were touched romantically, erotically, heartbreak, your favorite meal, the time a book changed your life, the time another changed your life, entire life, the time you felt utterly alone, like in here, utterly alone, but I, now I'm not so sure that is. I, that feels alone. It is I that feels alone, or that I can feel the loneliness of this whole place. Shit! He stands and moves with such speed towards the far wall of his room. It is not a big room at all, but the move startled you. You now realize that that thing maneuvers are inhumanly quick. You feel a shiver curse through your sp as you think of the possibility of having to face that thing with no divider. That thing gets loose, I'm fucked. Memories, what of them? Photos, photo albums, pictures of the past, archived memories, captured moments. Then there are the relatives, the lives we never knew, but tell part of our synopsis. Stones drifted down to the to us on moth chewed washed out cloth, spoken words of skeletons and broken locked closets, hinges pulled off or left ajar, where murky smudged truths have only now been wrung out dry, hung out dry, hung out too dry, Jesus, where time has played the moment of the wind. The corpse is dragged out, propped upon display, to be studied, observed and judged weightlessly, but never truly understood. Why keep the weight, the burden, preserving, measuring, labeling, and shelving, then unpacking, sharing, and passing on? Why? Because we are condemned to forgiving. Without proper storage and foundations, the sands and elements of time cover over and devour. Yeah, well, everything is forgotten eventually, even the great things, but isn't that what is wonderful about life? It allows you to have vindication over the obscure despairs we all suffer from. Your thoughts bring a slight bit of sauce to you, but there is still dejection waiting that thing the, through the screen, standing, breathing, existing in such a shrill state, like a semi-existence should be put out of this fucking misery, you think, as you fill with fury. These fucks speak of things that matter yet inhumanely keep this tortured thing in here. What a fucking lie. These fucking pieces of shit. Sickness begins to creep into your gut. Hey! You yell. It does not turn and the voice continues uninterrupted. The Lumina Bureau is the grip nodded to the anchor. Anthologists of all written through the black. We keep the accounts, catalog the narratives of the unornamented, capture the scenes with pickle and brine, a simple gesture, flattering the poor and misplaced. In the end, we are the only communities that leave 
have to coexist. We may not know each other very well, but this is a start. The start. We note down the beauty of it all. No! No, you fucks! Are a museum and a zoo, nothing more. You are collectors and hoarders with no sympathy. You are heartless. You have no opened hands. You have open cages disguised to clarity. Charity. Scott, it's some of these letters blend for me. I'm yelling at a fucking recording in a booth with some monster of what might have been someone just like me at some point on the other side. Can't even deal with this shit. I'm, you think to yourself as you begin to laugh like a madman. I'm losing it. But does it even matter? Is there any way out of here? Any victory for me to accomplish? Any meaning? Gain is lost and loss is gain. So what's the fucking point? Survival. <laughs> yeah, why well, have bright ideas searching for purpose in words? Definitive size to take a stance on. Hopefully, if I'm turning mad, I wish to be a happy madman. Continually swishing around in the shallow pools of good moods, laughing for no apparent reason from dusk dawn. Well, from dusk till dawn. <laughs> what nocturnal creature have I become in here? As the balance of what I was to what I am shifted, rub your face. The voice continues as you attempt to regain one some composure. In this place of somewhere, each and every one of us is forced to walk alone, searching for an elsewhere, an unknown elsewhere, but why search at all? We are the resistance to this somewhere. A station of belonging to something, offering sustenance through a walk of solitude in the dark. We bring the light, call it what you want, you fucks. I see the nature of you. You think as the boost lights up, clout completely, and the thing room disappears from the screen before you as the if the lights and they're switched off before you as if the lights and they're switched off you hear the door unlatch behind you open the door are we fucked you open the door and the fresh air hits you quickly you survey the room and check behind the booth nothing the room was never there it is still all the same within the tent Head for the hallway. You walk down the hallway. Nothing is out of place. A photo sits in the basic frame of the wall opposite to the door. You study it for some time, then you grip the door handle and you stare back at the image again. Study it one more time. What is that? It's weird. A deep breath fills your lungs. It feels good. You turn and face the door once more, leaving the picture behind. Here we fucking go again. Turn the handle. The darkness invades again, ever present, but in the not too far distance, you see the light, another path, you decide to head for it. The walk is quick, but somehow you feel within yourself that you have traveled considerable distance from where you once were. As you approach, you hear sobbing, moving closer. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. You hear a female voice weakly say through bouts of sobbing. You have walked to a solid wall, to your right where the light and sobbing is originating from. Everywhere else is the darkness, so there's only way, one way to go. Move on to the light. Move on to the light. You turn the corner and there sits a lady of middle age, very still, and she seems to be looking at something across the room, hidden in the dark just to your left. You look over, there seems to be nothing there. Your focus switches back to the lady, who may just be some sort of trance. Suddenly, you hear the sobbing coming from just behind her, a door. The sobbing is coming from just behind her. Step forward. You step forward, now exposing your presence from the dark. Hello? You present yourself as to not shock her. She offers no response at all. You take another step, looking at her. She still does not even flinch. You look at the door, the sobbing continues. Hello, hey lady, excuse me, what is going on here? This time you were sure to speak louder, still nothing. You sh You shouldn't go in there. She's broken. You're too late, you know. The girl's voice pronounces the girl's voice pronounces from the dark to the left of you. Spin to your left. Oh, that's scary. What the fuck is the first thought? 
Purple shades, pink shades, over yellow, over green, over black. Peggy is bruised beyond repair. The deformed girl speaks and then has nothing more to say. She turns away from the slowly, from you slowly with a ghostly plane of existence. In reality, you look over to the lady sitting on the chair. Grief seems to have molested her face. She still offers no sign that you are there. Walk to the door and enter it. You move towards the door, past the sitting lady. As you brush past her, she whispers, Give us for what we have done. You pause just past her. It isn't grief, it isn't regret. It is regret that has taken her and contorted her. You st think as a sense of urgency and worry embodies you. Open the door! You open the door, suddenly you feel out of place in time and space. The girl stands with her back to you, inside a black room, sobbing her disfigurement jolts you out of comprehension. For a brief moment, mercy burns it up in your heart. Whoa, what have they done to you? You mutter as your eyes fill with tears, inspecting her wounds. It is a sickening mix of open wounds, some surgical, some not, and what seems to be skin grafts and treatments only to be opened up again and again, almost over and over. Grab her by the shoulder. You try to turn her face to you, but you cannot. It puzzles you as you then attempt to walk around to see her face. No matter what you try, you are always left facing on the back of her head. You try all possible ways to get around it her every attempt in vain. I feel like a ghost. I want to get out of here. Please, someone help me. There is, this is no happy ending. Most of who I was has died, but I'm still here. Oh, I can help you. Are you okay? You realize how stupid the last part of the question was. However, she does not stir. She's so oblivious to you or intentionally ignore you. I'm sorry, I'm not what you wanted. Some of us are just born with tragedy in our blood. Excuse me, do you need help? Again with the dumb questions, but this time you make sure to have raised your voice. Still nothing. Am I just a mistake? This whole place is a fucking mistake, but you aren't. Nobody is a mistake. It's not the darkness that grabs me, it's the silence in here that grabs me around my throat. I cannot hide from my screaming thoughts. My head is so messed up. I feel like messing up. It's like trying to bite my own teeth. You turn to look behind you and around the room. Nothing but mi the mist of darkness, always at your shoulder. Flutters of concern make their way through your stomach. The black seems darker than ever. This darkness is terrible. Look at me, please. She continues deaf to your plea. I used to think that death was like being blind and dumb, but still conscious. I realize that now that that idea was silly and naive. No, this is this is something entirely different. Something far worse. Being dead would be a relief compared to this. What is your name? How did you end up here? It's so strange how odd, how torturous it all is. Unable to turn, unable to face anything, but I have. Inside myself, I have, I swear it. Her voice heightened by her statement through the heart hurting tears returned back to the somber despair. Always changing. I'm not even the same me I was five minutes ago. How is it possible to change so much but not be able to change anything at all? But I say trapped. Trapped in the same damn position, the same situation left contemplating and feeling these fucking feelings. Her voice quavers to a breaking point. I just want to get out of here. I still find myself guarding my defenses. I can't help but keep building walls around walls around nothing. I want to get out of here also. Suddenly you become truly aware of the absurdity of all this. Though, through it, you still just want to help her. Do not let her go through all this. Something inside you wants to support her more than supporting yourself. An absurd fucking hero. The labyrinth protecting myself so well that I can no longer find myself at the center of it. I'm growing a force that is ne forever that is ever expanding and constantly thickening, pushing all inner light that have I have left outwards. It's 
darker where myself sits this whole place. I didn't, I, I didn't even leave any crumbs to find my way back. The whole pathway in and out has been obliterated with so many turns, so many backtracks, circles, shortcuts, scenic routes, covered overs, unders, insides, and out, inside outs. All I want to do is get out of here. So do I, but I need you to listen to me. She's deaf, dog. I ran out on my own, cause, and this is the aftermath. Pushed out by not being wanted, even by myself. Well, at least I thought that, but I realize now that this isn't the case. I want me back, but it's also overbearing. I can't get out. I'm too weak to find me and take myself by the hand. How long do I have to be tortured for my for my wrongs? I've weaved a tangled web as a spider, but now I am this fly, stuck, trapped, and caged, slowly consuming my own life force. Not destroying myself is a lot of work. Apathy envelops me, a warm blanket of nothingness. Termites have masticated my core. The pain is so severe that even throughout the prison of rational thought, the agony vanquishes all else. It is time. Time for calm, because I am empty, not just around the edges, but even within. And now I weep, so alone. She produces a laser blade. The metal glistens with no shine you have ever seen before. Your eyes bulge out from your skull. You can feel them. I'm out here by myself, all alone. I wish they could see this world with the, through my eyes. It all hurts so bad inside. I can't get out of here. I just want to live again. My life is nowhere, and I'm sick of hoping. I'm in here by myself, all alone. I can't, cannot take any more. I care. I wish they could all see the world through my eyes. I just want to live again. I just want to live again. I just want to live again. No, don't do this. Don't be so optimistic. What? Oh, hell. Finally, she turns almost as though she had heard something, or she was merely searching for something or someone to eventually come. But you can't move, and you realize you have no influence over the next few moments. As they unravel right before your eyes, exhausted, the only thing you can do is stay. In some way, knowing that she was witness to and was not truly so alone. Bring some idea of something if anything so you sit beside her now you notice calmness slowly pull over the floor as the creature empties her veins opened by a razor goes on for some time and she continues to cry as her life's force spills forth and her self-affliction dulls to stillness how can emptiness be so fucking heavy she had no face left and i had no voice left to protest will anyone besides me remember her her shell and forgotten memories after she erased herself, will she just fade away? Once I meet my own demise with no one to memorialize, all this fucking darkness with cryptic pathways, could I have gotten here quicker? Was there another path? Choices? Always choices, and now I can't, cannot live down the deceit. Arr, fuck, why? You skeeter and cry, but no one is there. No one hears your call. It just echoes back at you. Nameless emotions fill you from the bottom of your soul to the top of your lungs. As you continue to cry and scream, the noises which you were escaping you cease after a while. You sit beside her for an incom incomprehensible amount of time. The dark red blood begins to dry on its edges as thick congealed crusts form over it. Sometimes you don't say goodbye only once. You say goodbye over and over and over and over and over forevermore. If only someone, if only, if only, if only, if only, if, if only, if only I wasn't so alone. If only we weren't all left alone. If only, if uh, now, if not only, anymore, not if anymore, but now. I've got to get a fucking, a fucking grip of some sort. Composure. Think, think, Jesus, fuck, think. How did I even get here? Where was I before here? What was I doing? Maybe if I can just remember, I can figure out what this here is. Where is here? Where here is? Damn it, where was I? Home. I was home and the dog was, was barking outside. I heard a dog. 
the television was on one of the infomercials were playing it was a mop yes a steam mop woof 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 the hell was he barking at the lamp beside the couch flickered with suburbia but i subconsciously noticed it before i remembered that detail now as i rose off the couch heading through the kitchen straight towards the back door the door was open and the screen was unlocked the light in the kitchen had this bright artificial sting to it as i walked through most have still been must have still been adjusting from sleep but damn it stung woof 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 i opened the back screen door i tried turning the light on by the switch nothing it was dead fucking shit i could see the dog in the middle of the yard moonlight blanketing everything to a low bluish gray nothing out of place except the dog it was facing towards me towards the house towards the back door avoiding the house he sat silently just staring at me it's strange to me the fuck is wrong good with a quickness shock entangled his way through me fear shot downwards from the tip of my brain to the end of my fingers in the kitchen my peripheral vision saw something through the sting of artificial glare was something dark some standing in the corner near the sink I fell up behind me I wasn't alone then darkness and voices it's about to begin again shh I know well how far do you think not very now keep quiet would you we're about to begin oh now I remember what it was move on to the darkness so alone this game's getting crazy in line you realize your tears could Turn this whole place into a swamp, but the realization of what you now know now and what is left to figure out. You have a fire that will burn the entire shithole to ash. You stand, let life intensifies and rise within. The darkness welcomes you once more as you take a new step. Soul alone, I'm alive in here. I'm open wide in here. It is still in, all incomplete. I'm the absurd hero in here. I'm, I'll take my time and bring this whole fucking place down to the ground. I am Sisyphus in here, pushing the boulder up the hill. I know, I know I'll never let it chain me. Hold me down, devour me. I welcome the darkness, not in me. And I will avenge Peggy, the final fold. We reach the final... Oh shit, wait a second. We reached the final fold of the entree of Soul Alone. The entree written by depicted prophet Nick Stravo and produced by Paranormal Games. This is a temporary ending. Thank you for partaking in the adventure, the journey into darkness. A special thank you to my wife and soulmate for her help. Support, patience, and love. We as one. My two beautiful children who drive me crazy in all aspects each day. Is this the end? each day of my life and it's the best type of crazy also david donahue david o donahue the oracle who always helps us find the answers we seek my brother in the other half of paranormal games nothing is ever possible without you within the menu is an area titled from us to you if you have not already looked into it please do there is more information regarding our hopes and plans for soul alone and it's ever expansive world. You can also check your store for the prequel to this, which is free to look for. It's all on the day before. I might have to look for that. If you have enjoyed the journey, please share and support us. I have a lot more to unfold to you, for you within Soul Alone, the domains, plus another connected title, IDLM. Take care, my friends. Be a good person, but never bother proving it. The end. That was awesome. Wait a second. I want to. There's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> There's so much in this game. I wonder if the options change. Options. From us to you. First of all, thank you for purchasing Soul Alone. It is much appreciated and very humbling to share this personal project with you and receive your attention and support. There is also Soul Alone the day before, available now for free on most stores, so check it out. The story is expanded through a prequel to this. This choose your own adventure style interactive novella is a work of fiction. Any references including images and sounds to real people, events, establishments, organizations, and loca or locales are intended only to give fiction a sense of reality and authenticity. 
Other names, images, sounds, characters, and incidents are either the product of the author's imagination or are used fictitiously, as are those fic fictionalized events and incidents which involve real persons and did not occur or are set in the future or a separated timeline. All images within the game are taken from Circa V Flickr and hold no known copyright restrictions. If there are any problems or infringements, we will remove the content on updates having the issue brought to our awareness. Built by Inkle Rider and Unity. Opening music by Alessandro Morshi singing Ava Maria the Last Cristrado. We are our own choices. So alone. Paranormal games. And the crumbs. Ah, uh, so alone and lit crumbs. Where to start? Well, I suppose it would be best to begin at the long term and then reduce ourselves inwards to the most present possible moment. Le Crumbs is the magnum opus of the whole affair. Le Crumbs visually pulls at inspiration from the Dideas avant-garde European movement of the late 20th century, throwing the player into a montage down a multi-layered characters, dealing with hidden secrets and having to unravel what the baker has created, and why or even if there is a why. It is no an exercise for no reason other than to just experience nihilism at its zero and zero that is nothing but zero. But the fact that it is all created for nothing is more of a reason to experience it after all. But there will be more on this at a later time. Soul alone is merely a smaller piece of the puzzle. Well, not so much a smaller piece, but more of a minor, more petite image within the puzzle. The first part of Soul Alone is an entree that will run on its tangent of Le Crumbs by, but also within its narrative. If it proves popular, there will also be be expanded parts to Soul Alone, where the story will continue into a maze in the desert. A three-course meal of the mind and imagination that will tackle various other philosophical avenues of thought. However, one must always remember that Soul Alone exists within the realm of Lake Crumbs. Why all of this? Well, because I felt like making it. Depict a profit. I really fucking enjoyed this game. I, I love this kind of shit. It's super weird and it makes you think really hard. I don't know what the, like... I guess he just told us what the thought process is, but it's really cool. We are a two-man team working full-time jobs and creating our games in our garage at nighttime. Stephen, I cannot pronounce that, Kautsoliotos, a game industry veteran, is my partner and my childhood best friend. He handles pretty much all the visual design along with most coding, and his knowledge of game design is fucking otherworldly. In a way, I've never, I've been his apprentice when it comes to video games, but have always been made to feel like an equal. We spend a lot of time working on our projects. We always aim to deliver what considered, we consider to be the bee's knees, with no fucks given to the fitting into a status quo. We bring you what you, we want to play, nothing less and nothing more. As for myself, I'm gonna have to donate to these guys. I really enjoy this game. <laughs> they gave it to me for free, but I'm gonna donate. I want to support this game. That was really fucking awesome. As for myself, my name is Nick Stravo, aka Depict a Prophet, and I am a husband and father to a chef in a cafe during the day, an independent game developer at night, and with the, in my being a writer, there's not much else to tell other than this. It's the first time I have taken a big step and masturbated my split ink into the far reaches of the world. I hope you swallowed out joking in all seriousness. Seriousness from me to you, I appreciate the fact that you purchased this and taken the time to allow me to share it with you. And I hope to continue this relationship with you, but time will tell. In Paranormal Games, thank you for the support. Authors who may be of interest. Oh, I can't read that well. <laughs> uh, this is one of the most exciting parts to share with you all. Further reading material that I guess Soul Alone pulled a lot of inspiration from. Now for me to name all works and all things I wish for you to stumble upon would never be a never ending list or for, at, excuse me, the least a rather long list. 
that would take some fun out of it. So if you enjoy Soul Alone, what follows is a list of writers and thinkers of various forms and are in no particular order, and I will not bother listing my favorite works by them. But if you have enjoyed this piece of work, you will find a plethora of great material from these fantastic people. John Pulsa Sater, I don't know, Albert Camus, Franz Kafka, Kafka, Robert Blano, Emil Sierra, I'm killing these names, Sierra, <laughs> David Foster Wallace, Mark Z, Daniel West, Daniel, Daniel Lewski, David Lynch, I don't like David Lynch, I do not like David Lynch, Eraserhead irks me to the furthest peaks of existence, I cannot tell you how much I hate Eraserhead, Haruki Murakami, Kokbo Ab Abe, Ayn Rand, I, I, I like Ayn Rand, I'm pretty sure I like, maybe I like Ayn Rand. See, the, did they write Jane Eyre? If not, then I don't know who Ayn Rand is. It sounds familiar though. And All Jewish Huskily, that sounds familiar too. So I know this one, I'm pretty sure I know this one, I could be wrong. Um, I know this one, I wish I did know this one. The list is provided for your discretion. Take care of my friend and always read on. Never become blind. Final thoughts. So within here, I wanted to touch on a subject that without saying too much, as for fear of ruining the game story, still needs to be addressed and noted. So without delving deeply into my own personal thoughts and opinion, which obviously share through my work, shine through my work, life is not easy for any of us out there. And at various degrees and depths of shit, we often find ourselves some drowning, some just a little bit on our their sneakers, a puddle of shit. But nonetheless, we all face struggles and it's hard. And I've had some dark hours where I have nearly succumbed to ending it all to suicide. And I have a few friends and family members that take their own lives, which I miss dearly. I have no reason or wants to judge people on their decisions. Some were more tragic than others and some of them would have been prevented. But that is not how it played out for them. Well, what I can say is, that I want you to remember that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem in most cases. I am no specialist or qualified in any matter other than what I have learned thus far in life. But whenever I do ponder on this subject, two out quotes come to mind that I will share with you now. It is not worth to the bother of killing yourself since you will always kill yourself too late. Only optimists commit suicide, optimists who no longer succeed at being optimists. The others, having no reason to live, why would they have any to die? Both are by Emil M. Sieran, which was one of the authors he listed previously. Now, he probably is one of the most depressing writers I have ever come across, but in a way, he almost finds beauty in it all. That, although he struggles, hits us never ending with no real purpose we still must go on to think something like suicide is a way to make things right to get back at those who have wronged you it'll show all of them it will end the heartache turmoil loneliness it's just being optimistic when we have no idea what the, is on the other side of that step i could express and expand my thoughts more far more on this but this isn't the place for that if you have any th feelings or ideas that seem to be leading you down a dark and cobblestone path, please, with all my fucking heart, seek help. It is out there. No matter the situation, look at every cat catastrophe that happens in the world. There are always helpers. Always people in the middle of it, helping any way they can. There is the help. Now I have no idea where you are in the world, but here in Australia, there is a lifeline. Australia, HTTPS sl colon slash slash www.lifeline.org dot au slash their phone number is 13H14 131114 Alternatively, National Suicide Prevention Life Hotline Call 1-800-273-8255 Crisis Hotline Text home to 741-741 as for the rest of you out there, just please just hit up Google search and find the help you need. Sincerely, 
depict a prophet in paranormal games. I agree with all that message he just had there. That, I love this game. It was really good. So I was going to um, play through the whole game and then... Oh, that's cool as hell. I think that doesn't change anything. But I was going to uh, play through this and try to get all the endings. But I really think you should do it. Your like experience this game for yourself. So I'm gonna take the endings that I got, and I highly recommend this game. If you love games that like thought provoking and approach reality in an interesting way, and is are strange because they're not like the normal thought process that people put into things. I would definitely check this out. And also, I'm gonna look up Ayn Rand real quick because I just want to see if I'm right or wrong. Because I could be completely wrong. Ayn Rand. Oh, she, Atlas Shrugged. Did they also do Jane Eyre? I could have sworn. Who did Jane Eyre? I'm completely wrong, I think. Who wrote Jane Eyre? Oh, Charlotte Bront. <laughs> uh, Atlas Shrugged. That's a, I didn't read her books then. Charlotte Bront. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was completely wrong. But I have heard of Ayn Ayn Rand. I've just never read any of her stuff. But thanks for watching, as always, guys. If you like videos like these, please like and subscribe. And I would definitely check this game out if I was you. If you have any, like, or inkling, if you watch this playthrough and you want to know more about this game and you want to support the creator, I recommend getting it. It was a lot of fun. And I'm going to donate to the game as well, even though they did give it to me for free. I really did enjoy it. Alright guys, thanks for watching as always.